Let's talk about why your beautiful 4K display might be killing the performance on your Mac. I know that sounds crazy, but it's something that I've experienced a time or two, and I wanted to put a video together kind of explaining why this happens and what you can do to fix the problem. Now, Mac has designed, or Apple has designed Mac OS to work in kind of two different configurations as far as screen sizes. There's non-retina and there's retina. They've given these things names for a reason, and they've also given all of their own displays these names for a reason, either non-retina, just a standard display, or a retina display. Now, in the past, I have used different 4K displays and even different 5K displays in an attempt to get the most screen real estate that I can get and the best performance that I can get out of my Mac. Right now, I'm currently using a 16-inch M3 MacBook Pro Max, and that is a fully specced out computer. It has tons of RAM, tons of performance, and I should never have any issues. Now, recently, I switched from using an Apple Studio display to a 4K 32-inch display from LG. I wanted to move to this display not only because it's an absolutely beautiful display, but because I wanted a larger display instead of adding a second display, I wanted that additional screen real estate. Now, it had been a while since I had used anything other than either my laptop display or that Apple Studio display. So initially, I forgot about the scaling issue that Macs have with other types of displays and the resolutions that they're capable of. Now, when I plugged in this LG display, it immediately chose a resolution scaling that I wasn't really happy with. I wanted the icons and the text and the menu bar and everything to be a certain size while still giving me as much screen real estate. Now in the display settings in Mac OS, it gives us five little monitor icons to choose from. On the far left, you probably have HD and on the far right, you have 4K. And then maybe somewhere in between is a resolution that makes the most sense. However, all of those resolutions in between are scaled resolutions that are going to affect performance. When you choose one of those resolutions, there's actually some text that shows up right below that says, when using a scaled resolution, it may affect performance. Now, it's gray text and it pops up. Maybe you didn't even pay attention to it. I know this time I didn't pay attention to it and I wasn't even thinking about it. I chose a resolution that was not either HD 1080 or 4K. I chose a resolution in between, and because of that, I suffered some performance issues with my Mac. Now, typical web browsing, email, all of that stuff was fine. I didn't notice any issues there. But when I was editing video or when I was editing photos, I was running into performance issues. And at first, I thought, how am I having performance issues with my Mac? This is the most specced out MacBook Pro that you can get. I know that it has plenty of performance but I was having issues. Things weren't loading as quickly as they should and everything was just running slow. I quickly realized that it's because of the screen scaling that was taking place. Mac OS is designed to operate at two different screen resolutions. There's non-retina and there's retina. Non-retina is 110 pixels per inch and retina is 220 pixels per inch. There is a reason that Apple displays are the size that they are and it has to do with scaling. There's a reason that Apple is able to produce these beautiful displays that look so good and it has to do with them sticking to and only giving these two different resolution options. Now you have either non-retina or you have retina and if you look at their external displays like the Apple Studio display or the XDR display, the resolutions of those displays scale perfectly with the 110 or the 220 PPI. Now the resolution options that Mac OS was giving me for my 32 inch LG display were not perfectly in alignment with those resolutions, which means that anything that takes place in between is going to require scaling and scaling is processor intensive. Now, like I said, basic web browsing, stuff like that, probably not going to cause a problem. But when you start using applications that require a lot more performance, that's when your system is not only having to run that application, which was likely designed for a retina or a non-retina display, not something in between. So now not only is the operating system itself having to scale, but the operating system is also having to scale the entire application. And if that application requires a lot of processing power, you're doubling up on everything that you have to do in order to utilize that software. And that was happening for me with Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Premiere Pro. Thankfully, all I needed to do was slide all the way over to the 4K resolution, which made everything super tiny, but I was able to get my performance back and continue to use my display. 
but that's not a resolution that I could really exist within. Everything is so small. It requires such drastic mouse movements to get all the way across the screen. Everything is so small, which means every movement of the mouse has to be much more precise or I'm going to miss a menu or fall off of a menu and have to go back and click through things again. It's just not an ideal experience, but it is how Mac OS is designed. There's a cool slash irritating graphic that I found online that shows a lot of different displays and whether they're good for non-retina or good for retina, or if they fall in this not good for either portion of the scale. And most displays tend to fall in that area. Of course, all of Apple's displays are great for non-retina or retina because of the way that they're designed. They're designed to operate with those specific resolutions. But every other monitor that's out there, most monitors that are designed for PCs are not going to have the appropriate scaling for Mac OS. And that's just frustrating. While on one side of the coin, I love the fact that Mac OS is designed to work really well with specific hardware. That's why we get such good performance out of our Macs, why we probably choose Mac, why retina displays are so beautiful. But it's also irritating on the other side of the coin because that means we're limited. We're limited in the type of external devices that we can use with our Macs, specifically monitors, because of the scaling resolution options. Unless you go with something like the LG 5K ultra fine display that was designed to work with Mac and has the appropriate resolutions, which is also a really old display and not something that I want to invest a bunch of money in. My options are either to buy an Apple display or to buy a third party display from another manufacturer and be very limited at the scaling options that I can use without taking a major hit to performance. Despite what the warning says on the computer that it may affect performance and a lot of articles that I read online saying not to worry about it. Likely the only people who don't have to worry about it are those who really use their Mac for lightweight things like browsing the web, checking emails and stuff like that. If you run any sort of software, maybe even run several apps at a time, or maybe utilize software that takes a little bit of performance, your Mac might not have enough performance to handle all the scaling for that display as well as the software that you're trying to run. So you likely came across this video because you were having some sort of performance issues, or maybe my catchy title pulled you in. But regardless, now you better understand why there might be some issues if you choose a third party display and maybe how to get around that. And for me, it's a good reminder of something that I kind of forgot because I'd been using an Apple display for so long. I'll put links in the description below to the displays that I know operate within the retina spectrum so you won't have any issues with scaling. And then I'll also link to the LG 32 inch display that I'm using because I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's an amazing display. It's designed to do a whole lot more than just be your computer monitor, which is why I chose it. The only downside is that I can only choose between two different scaling options and I'm either going to have to adapt or decide to go back to a different display. If you found this video useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I hope I'll see you back in another video soon. Take care.